Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to math. Okay. In the last two days, we have gone over how to multiply by multiples of 10. We have talked about how to multiply using expanded form, where we break our two-digit number into its place value form and multiply by each of those and then add them together. Today, we are going to be talking about how to do multiplication with two-digit numbers mentally. So again, just to recap, this is a review. This is a review just to dust off the cobwebs. Next week, we will start in with new instruction, but we wanted to make sure that after our long two-week break that we were ready to go for that. Okay, so this is a review. Um, but we are going to get started today with our video. Um, I hope that your IXL practices have been going good. I hope that you have been able to um, practice your math facts every day. I hope that all of that is going really well for you. Um, if it's not, reach out to one of your teachers and let us know what you're struggling with and maybe we can help you find a solution. But we do need to be practicing our math facts every day and we do need to um, make sure that we are doing our IXL homework. Okay, let's start our video. What are some ways to multiply mentally? Let's try some now. Evan rode his bicycle for 18 miles each day for three days. How many miles did Evan ride his bicycle? Find 3 times 18 mentally. You have learned how to break apart numbers to multiply mentally. How could you multiply mentally by breaking apart 18? How do you think we could do that? What is your first thought? My first thought is to break 18 into 10 and 8 and multiply both of those by three, and then add the sums together, or add the products together, actually. Think of 18 as 10 plus eight. Find the products of three times 10 and three times eight, and add the products. Now let's try two more ways. That's what we did yesterday, right? One way, use compensation. With compensation, you choose numbers close to the numbers in the problem to make the computation easier, and then adjust the answer for the numbers chosen. How can you use compensation to find 3 times 18? What do you think? Do you remember how we did that? Remember the first time we talked about compensation, I think we were all a little confused, but after we did it for several times, we got the hang of it really well. So if this doesn't sound familiar, give it a, give it a couple problems and we'll see that, oh yeah, we know how to do Substitute that. a number for 18 that is easy to multiply. 20 is two more than 18. Why is 20 easier to multiply than 18? What do you think? Maybe because it's a multiple of 10. Could that be it? 20 is a multiple of 10. So you can think of the basic facts for 2 and attach the correct number of zeros to the end of the product. 3 times 20 equals 60. Now adjust. Subtract 3 groups of 2. 60 minus 6 equals 54. So 3 times 18 equals 54. Evan rode his bicycle 54 miles. Now let's try another way. Another way. Pela rode her bicycle 32 miles each day for three days. How many miles did she ride? Substitute a number for 32 that is easy to multiply. Why might you choose 30 to substitute for 32 rather than 40? Why would we pick 30 instead of 40? Do you think it's because 30 is closer to 32 than 40 is? If we were looking at it on a number line, 30 would be a lot closer to 32 than 40. 30 is closer to 32 than 40 is. Now adjust. Would you add or subtract to adjust your answer? Okay. 
Now that we've had a chance to think about that, remember in class how Mrs. Kidd had on the side of her board that if you round up, what were we supposed to do? We even had hand signals. If we round up, we have to subtract. If we rounded down, if we rounded down, then we had to add. Do you remember that? Okay, so if we round down, that means we're taking numbers away from what we would have already multiplied. So because rounding down, we're gonna have to add those back in. If we round it up, we're adding more numbers, so we have to take those away at the end. What are we doing here? Is 32 greater than or less than 30? 32 is greater than 30. So we had to take two away in order to find this product, which means if we had to take it away, we have to add it back in. Do you guys remember that? Add. Since you subtracted 2 from 32, you need to add three groups of 2 to adjust. 90 plus 6 equals 96. So, 3 times 32 equals 96. Pela rode her bicycle 96 miles. Riding bicycles sure is fun. Yeah, it is. I hope you guys have been getting to do a lot of that lately. Okay, let's go to our practice. And I think by practicing, we'll be able to see and remember how this all worked. Okay, remember compensation is just us finding the closest number to ours that is easy to multiply. Okay, so for number one, it shows four times 33. Now the first thing you do when you are using compensation is you substitute a number that is easier to multiply for your two digit number. So in this case, our two digit number is 33. And so we're gonna find a number that's close to 33 that is easy to multiply. What do you think we could add in this case? That's right, I would pick 32, 30 also. So if four times 30 is 120, um, that's our substitution. And then we adjust by the numbers that are left over. So when we went from 33 to 30, did we go up or down? Did we add numbers or take them away? That's right, we took them away. We took three away actually, right? Um, so we need to take and multiply four times three because if we had left three in our number, if we had left three in 33, it would have been multiplied by four. And so we have to go ahead and multiply it by four anyway to, to make our adjustment. So four times three is 12. And if you'll notice, they've already put the 12 there for us, right? So you take your final or your product from four times 30 and you put it here at the beginning. That's a one. 120 plus 12 is 132, which means 4 times 33 is 132. Do you guys remember doing that? Okay, now remember, do it with me. If we go down, then we have to add it back in. If we go up, we have to subtract to take it away. And that's our little subtraction sign, remember? Okay, let's try another one. 6 times 37. What is 37 close to? 37 is close to 40. So we're gonna take and do six times. Mm, we're gonna do six times 40. And we know that offhand is 240, because six times four is 24, add our zero at the end. Now, in order to get to 40 from 37, we had to do what? We had to go right? So if we go up, we have to take away. So how many did we go up by? 37, 38, 39, 40. We went up by three. So we're going to take and multiply six times three to make sure those digits get multiplied also. Six times three is 18. Right? And again, we said we went up, so we have to take away. So we're going to put a subtraction sign here. I'm going to borrow from my four because I can't take 
eight away from zero. Zero will become a 10. 10 minus eight is two. Three minus one is two. And two minus zero is two. So six times 37 is 222. Appreciate y'all keeping up with me. Okay, in number three, 59 times three. 59 is close to what? 60, absolutely. So then we would take 60 times three. 60 times three is 180. That is a crazy looking eight. Draw a little line here to separate that problem from this problem. Okay, we want up by one. So if we go up, we have to take it away at the end. So one times, let's try that again. One times three is three. And you'll notice hopefully that how Mrs. Kidd is lining up our ones place. Okay, so that we can subtract easily. So 180 minus three is going to be 177. Okay, so 59 times three would be 177. Okay, is this making sense? Are we dusting off some cobwebs? I sure hope so. Okay, number four, why were three groups of two subtracted instead of added in the one-way example on page 460? Now again, we don't have our books in front of us, so we're gonna cross this one out. Um, number five, use compensation to find 73 times three mentally and explain the process. So let's walk through this process together and hopefully it'll be a little neater with more space, but 73, times three. What is 73 close to? 73 is close to 70. Did we go up or down to get to 70? We went down, so we're gonna have to add it back in, right? 70 times three, seven times three is 21. Add a zero at the end. Okay, so we have our adjust, or our substitution, right? Now we need to adjust. We went down by three. So now we have to take that same three and multiply it by what it normally would have been multiplied by, right? It normally would have been multiplied by three. Three times three is nine. So because we went down, we have to add it back in. 210 plus nine is going to be 219. Okay. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you remember that if you round down, you have to add it back in. If you round up, you have to take it away. Okay, let's go on and let's do a couple of, let's do six through nine together and then I will give you 10 through 18 for you to try at home. Okay, five times 17, what is 17 close to? 17 is close to 20. Okay, five times 20 is 100. So we're gonna put 100 first, and we're gonna take away 15. Why do we take away 15? We take away 15 because 17 is three away from 20, right? Three away from 20, and it needed to be multiplied by five also, right? Three times five is 15. Okay, and that's why we would take away 15 because we round it up, so we have to take it back away. 100 minus 15 is 85. Good job. Okay, three times 43. What is 43 close to? 43 is close to 40. We had to round down, so now we're going to add it back in. Three times 40 is 120, so we're gonna put that at the beginning. Right? And then 43 is three away from 40. So we need to take the original three that we were gonna multiply by 
times the three that we took out to get nine. And Mrs. Kid's just doing this to show you where they are getting these numbers from, okay? Um, so 120 plus nine, we add it back in because we rounded down. 120 plus nine is 129. Okay, great job, guys. Seven times 29, seven, or 29 is closer to what? 29 is closer to 30. Good job, seven times 30 is 210. Now this time they gave us the 210 and told us that we have to subtract. Why do we have to subtract again? That's right, we have to subtract because we rounded up. We added stuff to it, so we have to take that away in the end. Okay, how many did we round up by? We only rounded up by one, so we take one times the number that we were originally multiplying by. One times seven equals seven. 210 minus seven is going to give us 203, okay? So a seven times 29 would be 203. Okay, are we catching on? Let's do this last one together and then I'm gonna have you do some on your own. Five times 62, what is 62 close to? 62 is close to 60. Okay, five times 60 is 300. Did we round up or round down? That's right, we rounded down. What did, what did we round down from? 62, 62 is two away from 16, so we need to take and multiply that two still by five. Five times two is 10, so we actually have to add that 10 back in. So 300 plus 10 equals, sometimes I think it's hard to see those equal signs, equals 310, right? So five times 62 would be 310. Okay, now it's your turn. I hope you have your sheet of paper out with you. If not, push pause on your video and grab a sheet of paper and a pencil, and I want you to write these problems down so that you can work them at home, okay? Number 10, seven times 28. Number 11, 61 times eight. Number 12, 64 times three. Number 13, four times 23. Number 14, 44 times six. Number 15, nine times 52. Number 16, nine times 83. Number 17, two times 68. Number 18, 95 times five. Okay, there's nine problems for you to practice with after you're done practicing. If you have any questions or needed extra help, make sure you get on our Zoom call this afternoon. Um, but also make sure that you are going to your IXL after this to do your homework for this lesson, okay? Please let me know if you have any questions. But you guys are doing so great and I am so proud of how hard you are working at your lessons. As I've said before, as we go along, this is going to get a lot smoother, a lot easier to do. And so hopefully that this is working for everybody. Um, I can't wait to see you on the Zoom call this afternoon. We will talk to you later.